Before Del Hansen started teaching physics at Mayfield High School in Las Cruces, he accumulated a slew of teaching awards and held a number of influential positions in state education as an evaluator, school administrator and even working with the Golden Apple Foundation, selecting the top teacher in the state each year. He says teacher evaluations must prioritise two things – a teacher's subject knowledge and their capacity to impart key concepts. You're just not presenting material, you're teaching it. You're trying to, um, you're trying to uh, elicit understanding. The second thing you have to have is the ability to communicate effectively. The New Mexico Public Education Department's calculation for teacher evaluations is far more complex. 50% of it is based on student test scores. The other 50% is divided between in-class observations by administrators and measures, some find perplexing. New Mexico teacher evaluations can be based on class seating arrangements, the amount of technology used, the display of student work in the classroom and documentation of learning objectives. Teachers can even be evaluated based on student and parent survey. In an Albuquerque Journal column, Public Education Secretary-designate Hannah Scandera said the new evaluation system has given the state more information about teacher performance. But teachers like Del Hansen say the state system does not effectively measure performance. I see very good teachers that have been very good teachers for a long, long time uh, to the point of tears. Um, they're, they're frustrated, they are, uh, their, uh, their attention has been diverted away from um, what students learn in the classroom and how they learn best to following what I think are silly um, uh, steps and, and rules uh, in order to be able to accomplish this evaluation. Hansen says even if the system was effective in measuring teacher performance, its rollout has been riddled with oversights. Oversights, he says, make the evaluations invalid. He uses the example of students' surveys of their teachers. There's no quality control on it. You know, students could do multiple surveys, parents could do multiple surveys. You have three or four students that, that you made mad during the course of the semester and they go after you. Scandera's office did not respond to interview requests, but Scandera acknowledged in the Albuquerque Journal column that the new evaluation system is not perfect. However, she contends it's a dramatic improvement over the old system that found 99% of teachers to be effective. The new system graded about three quarters of teachers as effective, but Hansen says teachers are not being given enough guidance to prepare students for the end of course tests. In some cases, those tests may comprise 50% of the teacher's evaluation. There aren't any standards. So what you're essentially doing is trying to, to teach your students all of physics, and they're going to pick 15 questions from all of physics and put it on there. Um, I'm currently not uh, spending a lot of time on electricity and magnetism. That's something I'll get at a later time. I'm, not, I'm just not doing that. I, have, I made some other priorities. If seven out of the questions are electricity and magnetism, the kids will fail. If the system finds a teacher to be minimally effective or lower, they are required to be put into professional growth plans. But their termination is ultimately left in the hands of local schools. For KRWG, I'm Simon Thompson.